justice will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the inevitable journey. Before the break, we were talking about the importance of dying as a Muslim. Brothers and sisters in Islam, من عاش على شيء مات عليه ومن مات على شيء بعث عليه Whatever you are doing right now is whatever is how you will die. Look at you right now. Would you like to die doing what you're doing right now with your lives? How do you know that death is not going to come to you right now? Why didn't you start from here? You see, the inevitable journey is not to talk about the end. One of the greatest things about learning about the inevitable journey that it sends us to the beginning, to begin again, to repent, to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah will accept you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He will accept you. But all it takes is you returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to live Islam the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered it to you through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to share with you some of the stories of those who lived their lives working for Islam and see how they died. I share with you the story of Nuh alayhi salam. You see right now we're telling you to say la ilaha illallah and we're asking those who are around the deceased to prompt gently we have to gently prompt the deceased to say la ilaha illallah Look, Nuh alayhi salam, actually, as he was departing this world, he was prompting his children or his son in one of the wording and the hadith fi Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, lamma hadara Nuh al-wafah, he called upon his son and he told him, I want to leave you a wasiyah, I want to leave my will to you. You see, Nuh alayhi salam, spent his life calling his people to Tawheed. 950 years calling people to Islam. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Indeed, we sent Nuh to his people and he spent amongst them 1,000 years, but 50, 950, calling them to Islam. This is what he harvested at the time of death. At the time of death, he's calling his son and he's telling him, Make sure that you keep up with La ilaha illallah. You see, we're supposed to be prompting him to say La ilaha illallah. It's the other way around. And this is the reward. And again, one of the keys to say La ilaha illallah at the time of your death, if you give it as a da'wah to non-Muslims. And I call upon our brothers and sisters all over the world to go and spread la ilaha illallah because if you deliver it to the non-Muslims, Allah will grant it to you at the time of your death. Ibrahim alayhi salam, someone who was stripped naked in front of a fire because of la ilaha illallah. Because he refused to give up La ilaha illallah. He had to leave his homeland for la ilaha illallah. Look, as a reward also, at the time of his death, he tells his children, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبْ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى And Ibrahim, enjoying upon his children and Jacob alayhi salam, Allah has chosen for you the deen. Don't you die but as Muslims. Umar ibn al-Khattab 
رضي الله عنه who was known with his excellence once it comes to enjoining good and forbidding evil while he was passing away and the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari a young man enters into his place where he was laying in the ground after he was stabbed and then the young man praises Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an in some of the wording of this hadith, other wording that it was Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Abshir bi Bushra Allahi lak, glad tiding, O oh, commander of the faithful. You were the companion and you were, and he started saying, as the young man was departing, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh dying, he saw that his clothes were touching the ground. He said, Bring him back to me left your clothes it will be cleaner for your clothes and atqa li rabbik and a sign of righteousness and piety for your lord here he is even at the time of his death allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables him to enjoy good and forbid evil because he lived his life enjoying good and forbidding evil uthman ibn affan radiyallahu an uthman ibn affan the night before he dies or he was killed and stabbed he sees a dream that the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr and Umar told him fast tomorrow because we want you to break fast with us he fasts Uthman ibn Affan عنه, and he was knowing of his love for the Quran and he was stabbed while he was reciting the Quran. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was giving his wasiyah, his will to his children, and he died saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we know people these days, right before they, their death, they request cigarettes, smokes, they request drugs, they request musics to be played for them. We know also people, right when they are about to die, they actually want to count money. They request money to count because that's what their hearts were consumed with throughout their lives. They were slaves to the dinar. They were slaves to the dirham. Losers. Ta'isa abdu dinar Ta'isa abdu dirham Ta'isa abdu al-khamisa. Ta'isa abdu al Losers are those who make themselves slaves to the material of this world. Enslave yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of resurrection, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of death will enable you to remember him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, be amongst those who remember death a lot is one of the keys to be able to say la ilaha illallah at the time of death because if you remember death you will be able to prepare for it fi sahih ibn hibba fi sunan ibn majah hadith ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma the, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by one of from al ansar who is the best person the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best in manner the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked وَمَنْ أَكْيَسُ النَّاسِ And who is the most intelligent, prudent person? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لِلْمَوْتِ ذِكْرًا Someone who remembers death a lot. وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ لَهُ اسْتِعْدَادًا And those who prepare for it. Remember, death will come to you sooner or later. And what matters is how you ended your life, the final stance, 
is what matters regarding your journey. A question that you have to ask yourselves now. Are you content? Are you pleased with the way that you are right now? Would you like the angel of death to come and take your soul while you are doing what you're doing right now? If the answer is yes, hope in Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon you the mercy so that you will be insha'Allah amongst those who say that kalima at the time of their death. And if you're not, what are you waiting for? Do something about it. Spare yourselves. Save yourselves. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O ye who believe, ma lakum idha qeela lakum unfiru fi sabeelillah, itha qaltum ila al-ard, araditum bil hayati al-dunya min al-akhirah. فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٍ Oh, you who believe, what is wrong with you? Why, when you're called to march, march for the cause of Allah, so that you can make it to Jannah, you cling to earth. You want to continue doing, I will. Let me just finish college. Let me just finish the high school. Let me just make some money and then I will be... Akhi, I make a contract with you that the angel of death is not going to come to you before you finish your ambitions. You don't know. Death comes by all the sudden. Death comes by all the sudden. You cling to earth. Are you happy with this world instead of the hereafter? What is this world in relation to the hereafter, in comparison to the hereafter? Brothers and sisters in Islam, work for the hereafter. Work for the minute of death. Insha'Allah, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, don't miss the next episode of the inevitable journey. We will talk about the journey of the soul. Once it leaves the body, the next episode, do not miss it. Because we're going to talk about the soul of the believer and the soul of the kafir, the kafir, the disbeliever being taken out of the body and the journey that it makes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and back, of course, the soul of the believer will make the journey. The soul of the kafir will be rejected and then back to the graveyard and we'll continue talking about the graveyard. Let's learn about the inevitable journey so we get ready for it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to eat